A 23 year old was killed by gangsters and his body was dumped in the street after he attempted to burgle a cannabis factory. Thomas Wagger was beaten to death by members of an Albanian organised crime group who descended on the scene in Wales after an alarm was raised. Mr Wagger's sister says her brother was dumped like a bag of rubbish by his killers. So what did happen? For 23 year old Thomas Wagger, it seemed an easy win. With the baby on the way and with money being tight, a chance to make some money an old-fashioned burglary at house number 319 Newport Road in Cardiff. From what he had heard, it held over £120,000 worth of cannabis plants. The plan was daring and simple. On January 28, 2021, Thomas Wagger and his associate Carl Davis travelled from London to the street in Cardiff. Carl Davis waited in the van while Thomas Wagger would find a way into the house. Unknown to them, the gardener Hoysan Eljaz was in the factory upstairs when they broke in. He called other members of the Albanian gang, which included Josef Nushi and Mihal Dana. 23-year-old Thomas Wagger was beaten by Nushi and Dana with a baseball bat and a bamboo cane, and they hit him with a broken house brick from off the floor by a knock through wall. Thomas Wagger was also kicked and stamped in the head and body before being dragged out of the house and thrown into the gang's Mercedes car boot. Carl Davis, the van driver, was badly wounded but managed to run away and hide from the gang. Thomas Wagger had suffered 28 injuries to his head and mouth, bruising to his chest, damage to his 7th, 8th and 10th ribs and his arms were broken. As well as a degree of swelling and bruising to his brain, he was driven through 319 Newport Road and his body was dumped in Westfield Road. His wallet and phone was taken. The deceased was later found by a passerby the same evening. The cause of death was given as obstruction of the airways by blood. Following the killing, Nushi Dana and Algez fled to Albania but were eventually extradited back to the UK before standing trial. Nushi 28 at Ninian Road, Roth, and Dana 29 at Column Road, Cathays, were found guilty of Thomas Wagger's murder following a trial at Newport Crown Court last year. The gardener, Algez, 31, of no fixed abode, was found guilty of manslaughter. Nushi and Dana were also found guilty of wounding with intent in respect to Carl Davis, while Algez was found guilty of unlawful wounding. Nushi and Al-Jaz also pleaded guilty to production at Class B. At a sentencing hearing at the same court, a victim personal statement was read out on behalf of Thomas Wagger's sister, Patricia. She said, I am making this statement on behalf of my mother, my father and Thomas's partner, who have all had to try to complete their own statements. However, they are finding this extremely painful and upset him, and therefore have been unable to do so. I have been living in survival mode since, and the pain of not being there to comfort him in his last moments of life as his older sister has been unimaginable. Not to mention the inhumane way in which he was dumped like a bag of rubbish, which will haunt me for the rest of my life, as will seeing his lifeless and battered face during a formal identification. The events that unfolded on January 28th, 2021 did not warrant my brothers being killed as no one deserves to have their life taken at the hands of another individual or even worse, numerous individuals, as was the case here. Regardless of the circumstances, as there was always a situation could have been dealt with in which it did not need to result in his brutal passing. Thomas had his entire life ahead of him, including a newborn son, who is now fatherless and unable to, outside of the cemetery grounds, celebrate Father's Day, among other things with him. He was robbed of witnessing his son's countless precious moments and milestones, including taking his first steps and saying, Dad, it truly breaks my heart seeing him growing up without my brother. And much of my family and I are here to support him every step of the way in going forward. 
but he could never replace the bond he would have had with his dad, who I know loved him with all of his heart and wanted the best for him. In mitigation for Nushi, Stephen Moses, KC, said there was no premeditation to the murder and was a response to the burglary of the cannabis factory. He said there was a degree of provocation from the burglars. He said Nushi was previously a man of good character who had worked as a farmer in Albania before coming to the UK to provide a better life for his family. John Ryder KC for Dana said his client intended to cause serious harm to Thomas Wagger but not to kill him and there was a lack of premeditation. He said Dana was not involved in the cannabis production and was not a member of the organised crime group. The barrister said the defendant had done village work in Albania before coming to UK to earn more money to support his elderly mother and his family. Jeremy Wainwright KC for Al Jazz referred to a letter from a relative which referred to his client's brave service as a fireman in Albania. He said the defendant took part in a rescue operation during an earthquake in which he saved a man from being buried underground and was given a bravery reward. The barrister said Al Jazz was sorry for his involvement in Mr Wagger's death but apologised to the family. Sentencing, Mr Justice Cotter said, just before 11pm on January 28, 2021, the body of Thomas Wagger was dumped from Mercedes car boot onto the pavement of residential road in Cardiff. As his sister described it, he was disposed of like a bag of rubbish. He had been brutally beaten with fatal consequences. Thomas Wagger was 23 years of age, his death leaves grieving parents, a loving sister, a partner and a newborn son who will never know his father. The pain and loss for the family will never go away. For them it's a life sentence. Nushi was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 20 years. Dana was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum term of 16 years. Al Jazz was sentenced to 10 years imprisonment. He will serve two thirds of his sentence in custody before being considered for parole.